Hi and welcome to the Motorsport Show as we look back at Sebastian Vettel's walkaway victory in the Canadian Grand Prix on a circuit you'll remember that on paper seemed to have been tailor-made for Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton. We'll be looking back at tech updates from the Montreal pit lane and with Le Mans this weekend we'll be having a look at the great race through the eyes of Derek Bell, five times winner. First though, let's have a look through some of the results from that Canadian Grand Prix. I'm joined in the studio by our regular technical analyst, Craig Scarborough. Craig, he didn't set fastest lap but I think inevitably we have to give Sebastian Vettel and Ferrari 10 out of 10 for Canada. Uh, yeah, certainly from Saturday onwards, it was yeah. uh, you know, a perfect result for them, really. Uh, yeah. Had their issues on Friday, worked out what the circuit needed this weekend, and, and bounced back immediately. And those issues, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because looking at it from afar, you could say Sebastian built up beautifully to qualifying, didn't really stretch himself on Friday, worked out what he was doing with full fuel load, whatever it was. We now know he, he didn't like the balance of the car. Mm. Presumably what we're talking about is that this circuit was very different in character from previous years because mm -hmm. of the additional DRS and because they're now running more downforce. So Ferrari overnight did a very, very good job of adjusting the car to a higher downforce setup with the balance they needed from the tyre data they had, which is not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. All credits to Giovinazzi for doing that in, on, on the sim back in Italy. So yeah, I mean, so Ferrari's agility to respond to the uh, the changing of the circuit year on year and the, you know, the prevailing conditions really is what brought that result for them. And you know, it's not something we've always seen from Ferrari, their ability to change, mm. th certainly through a weekend or an expectation of a weekend. So clearly something that Jock Clear is doing with the team. Well, yeah, I mean, well. I was thinking immediately, I was thinking mm. maybe Jock Clear, because there is a very clear mind in terms of the way to operate around a race weekend. And that's what he's doing very, very well. And the other thing about Sebastian is that the drive you see we saw in Canada was just brilliant in everything he did and all the pressure points he was there and he reacted beautifully he was great at the start he was very good at the restart he was good under pressure when it was there a little bit and then late in the race he was putting in some purple fastest laps when he needed to just to stamp his authority beautiful to watch and you wonder how it can be the same driver that was doing what he was doing in Baku in 2017 <laughs> but anyway you know people change and, and all credit to him and Ferrari for the job they did moving on to Valtteri Bottas I thought he did an excellent job in the sense that he was basically quicker than Lewis all weekend and regardless mm. of not whether Lewis had that engine problem in the race Valtteri had him and that was one of those weekends where again Mercedes weren't quite there and, mm. and as soon as that happens we see Valtteri getting a bit of an edge it's it's a weird thing yeah, it's strange that Valtteri seems in an odd way more consistent than Hamilton, who is consistent. But yeah, yeah. he's always there to kind of back up that sort of issue. Except when, when the car's really good, and then Lewis is always Exactly. Ahead. It's, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a strange one. It's one of those very few weekends where Mercedes really were on the back foot throughout the weekend. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's largely down to how the, you know, the tyres and the, uh, the downforce. Yeah, the and I think about Valtteri is that he's always been very good at Montreal, even going back to the Williams days. He was mm -hmm. so good there. And... I'd love to be able to say where he is quicker than where he was quicker than Lewis Hamilton on a mm -hmm. given lap on the same tyres and fuel load around Montreal. Very, very difficult to tell, apart from Lewis looked a little bit messier on the slower corners, which is a bizarre thing to say, an unusual thing to say about Lewis Hamilton. But Valtteri is so good and so neat and precise, getting the car straight and maximising the deficiencies of the car, but making sure that he had those street line exits in a way that perhaps Lewis wasn't this last weekend. Yeah, I think Valtteri just had that confidence in the car that he could push to the absolute limit on you know, mm. every corner exit, yeah. whereas Lewis, you, you know, forever seeing him just leaving a little gap uh, towards the curbs and the walls on exits to corners, and he obviously wasn't comfortable with the balance of the car, and you saw you know, through the race, yeah. lots of oversteer. The car just didn't look comfortable underneath Hamilton all weekend. Max Verstappen, by contrast, was on the limit throughout the weekend, quickest in the first three sessions, uh, very quick in qualifying as well, and drove beautifully in the race. I'm not surprised. There are a lot of people out there who've been on his case. I like to think I've not been one of them because Max, for me, is a driver that, by definition, is very different from most of the guys out there. And, and a lot of people have criticised him, saying he's got to leave more margin, he can't assume that he's the most important man in the world and this bit of track belongs to him. Well, you know, I lived with a lot of this with Nigel Mansell in his early stages, and exactly the same things used to be said about Nigel. He has no right to be passing here, putting his nose in there. And a lot of it was due to the way Nigel drives. He's a straight-line driver, turns in very early, and as soon as he's racing with somebody who turns in a little bit later, it's kind of, well, he's left a gap here, I'm going to go for it. And it's only after two or three years you realise he hasn't left a gap, it's just that you drive very differently and you've got to make allowances. And that's what Max, I think, as a result of everything that's happened, is now starting to do. And, and he looks so good around Montreal. It's breathtaking to watch. On every corner, 
every bit of curb, every braking area. He was absolutely <laughs> brilliant, I thought. It was. I mean, it, you know, the performance that we would hope to expect every time from Verstappen, really, wasn't it? Mm. I think there's been some mind management going on in the background there, despite the sort of, you know, the headbutting comments um, before the well, weekend. If I was him, I would have said the same thing. I mean, get off my case. I have actually driven some pretty good races up till now. You know, select all the ones you don't like, if you want, but give me a bit of credit for what I have done. Mm. And then there was Daniel Ricciardo, who, yes, he was behind Max for various reasons. He had a bit of an issue in qualifying or build up to qualifying, didn't get quite the same mileage. But again, drove a brilliant race, I thought, because Max was there, but it didn't psych him out. He still drove a beautiful race within his own bubble. And every time you saw him, he was square on the road, doing nice things with the car. Late race pressure from Lewis Hamilton, he reacted beautifully to that. Uh, another classic drive from Daniel Ricciardo. The other two that I think deserve a lot of mention are Esteban Ocon, who was superb for Force India again. Mm -hmm. And if you want to speak to anybody about how good Charles Leclerc is, we must speak to Fernando Alonso because he's driven a lot of laps behind him now. And Charles is so good at defense. He's so good at not making mistakes. Another supreme drive from him in the Sauber.